amazing. Every time I can view such a, a wonderful man surrounded by such wonderful art, I'm doing all right. So, you know, things could be way worse. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for joining us today. I think, you know, A, thank you for letting us into your home. You have an incredible home and an incredible art collection that is, I would describe as minimalist. You know, can we say that? Um, obviously not. I mean, this is a, this is obviously the kind of collection that you build over years, you know, decades, and with you know so many relationships and, and so many so much open mindedness and kind of the I look appearing to experiment and support so many different careers. Um, so thank you for joining us. Oh my gosh, my absolute pleasure, and I'm and it's nice to be able to share this. Yes, I mean people are gonna gag. So let's get started here. I think that, I mean, I think that most people who are not immersed in the art world like you or me, um, kind of approaching art collecting is something that's a little bit mysterious um, and especially kind of having the breadth uh, and depth of a collection like this is, you know, very elusive and intimidating. So like, here we are, for those who have never been, um, to kind of the front door of Arthur's home. Here you can see like any number of very prominent artists, really incredibly different works. Like, how did you kind of go about setting up your aesthetic? And kind of like, what are we looking at here? You know, I, I love um, telling a story with the work. And that's that's something that's very important now at this stage in collecting. But, you know, to go back to the beginning, it really just started as an appreciation of uh, art, which I, I kind of always had. And uh, as an adult, I, was one of my first passions. It was sort of the first thing I did um, when I started, uh, you know, like making money working and and uh, started buying art. So I, I started, you know, at like 75 bucks and it just grew. And that was a lot of money for me at the time. So I, I am now in a place where I have the fortune um, to not only engage with so many different artists and so many different narratives, but to you know, live in a space where I get to tell different stories with the works that I collectively put together. Absolutely. So, go on. Sorry. No, go ahead. Well, I mean, you, I mean, there's so many different pieces to even touch upon. Now, well, first of all, I think we're far from seventy-five dollars. You know, just for the viewers. <laughs> we have left that stage of pricing a long yes, time ago, we, so we, don't we, get fooled we, by we, that. We on a little bit. <laughs> um, so yeah, but like a couple of these. I mean, first of all, I mean, even just like the kind of actual physicality of some of this. Like we have this piece here on your wall, which I, I would imagine was quite an endeavor to even get into the house. Yeah, that's a Maleko Magosi, and uh, you know, Maleko's practice uh, is mostly comprised of very large works. Also, although this is a singular work. Um, it was one of those that I purchased and then prayed to God that there was somehow I was going to fit it in my house. So I did my own poor measurements and decided, yeah, it fits in here, and then realized that the place I wanted it to go, it didn't fit. So I had to have, um, I had to have a, um, a plinth built for it that it sits on and it's screwed onto, and then in order to get it into the room, it had to be slide at a certain angle, but the canvas couldn't touch the ground. And lots of things have to be moved, and um, yeah. So You're building a house here, around here. art, you know. You're like it, <laughs> it literally, technically fits. Uh, a couple other things here, like so. For those of you who are, you know, fashion fans, you may recognize this piece here from Amuafa Buaco, um, and this is, I think, one of the inspirations for the Dior collection. How was it like yeah. to see artists? Like, I'm assuming that when you got this piece that was not even in your mind that this would eventually be the kind of inspiration for that, or was it? You know, it's so wild. So I knew that um, I've been a collector of his work for a while, and I knew that I wanted something larger and, and more significant. So at the time I was acquiring this work, um, the Dior campaign was indeed in effect. So I knew of the painting's existence for quite some time without it being in my possession. And then, you know, I the joy of not having social media is that you can sort of sneak things and live with them for a while in secret and then, like, no one knows. So this, of course, ruins that. So thank you, Trey. Um, but it is it is, <laughs> it is is something I'm, I'm really very proud to own because I think it's also a pivotal moment in his career and where he is and his trajectory. And this show was absolutely extraordinary. And... You know, this, works like this become anchor pieces in your collection. So I am just grateful to be the custodian of this work. And paired with him uh, to the left 
Those four beautiful heads are by uh, the amazingly talented Micheline Thomas. And it's sort of this wonderful homage to, you know, a master who has established herself in this narrative in a truly meaningful, special way. And I'm, I'm just so honored to have uh, her work in my collection and then to see it in conversation with so many young artists who are on their way is, it's, it's kind of a nice thing. So that's, that's a really important narrative as I, as I walk through the house and go into different rooms and put, pulling things together. Absolutely. I mean, I think that, you I mean, you should have a seminar that's just, you know, walking through your home. I, mean, I guess we're doing it. Um, one of the things, <laughs> you know, it's so good for us. So, I mean, I also think that, you know, obviously we're in this moment in time where there seems to be like a, a lot more interest in black artists, but also art that has like a very distinct point of view. And uh, several of the pieces in your house, obviously, you know, are political or are, are kind of touch upon the real issues that we're dealing with as a race or as a people. Like you have this neon piece here in your stairwell. I mean, how do you decide kind of like when you see an artist or a piece that is making a kind of declarative statement that that's something you want and you kind of balance with maybe more abstract pieces that you have? Yeah, you know, this work is by Patrick Martinez and uh, it says all men are created and equal does not light up. And you, it's, it's a hard arresting work that when you see it, you begin to then question, you know, what, hey, I think something's wrong because like your neon's not actually working. And it's like, no, it's working. Equal doesn't light up. Yeah. Yeah. Equal's so not working. Like, yeah, so it's, it's one of those, those really powerful statements by an artist that's done in a way that's completely his own language, um, which I have grown to just treasure. I'm a, I'm a really big Patrick Martinez fan. And um, I think it's important that as I, again, tell stories throughout um, different rooms and with this collection, that it reflects the times that we're in and also nods back to a past that we cannot forget. And it's just a reminder that we've got a very long way to go and there's a tremendous amount of work to do. So I'm, I'm very comfortable living with reminders that things aren't as they should be yet. Right. And, you know, I, the piece we'll get to later outside with the White House, it's like that. I'm not sure when you, when, when did you buy this or when was it made, if you can recall? Uh, it's actually called Black House. Uh, and it, I, that was a purchase, a uh, COVID purchase um, from a local, Mike Hernandez. And, you know, part of Mike's story was that, um, you know, slaves built the White House. And he and I talked about doing something um, for the outdoors, and Suzanne Vilmitter, uh, who's an amazing gallerist, um, had a program where she allowed the people who typically handle the art and come to your house to install are artists, and they created work. And she did a series of um, digital salons with uh, some of her installers, and Mike was one, and I flipped out when I saw both of these works. So this is Black House, and then the companion piece is Frederick Douglass, the first black president, which sits on the other wall. So just two great, wonderful additions. And they're made from uh, pound concrete, which is actually a, sort of amazing. And, and Mike is a genius artist and someone I'm a really big fan of. Um, that work is by an artist um, from New Orleans, my hometown, and it's Louisiana Driftwood, which has been hammered with, um, as you can see, uh, hundreds, if not uh, you know, over a thousand copper nails and uh, just something that's just very powerful. And I, I, I think one of the things that's a hallmark of the collection is just lots of work by women of color in a variety of narratives that I'm just, you know, I'm just completely obsessed with the different stories that are told. One question someone may have is like, where do you, where do you get a lot of this work? I mean, it seems at this point that you have, I mean, you're a well-known collector and you have a lot of relationships with artists. Are you typically just walking into a gallery and saying, oh, wow, this is great. Or are you kind of, going on studio visits? Are, are people sending you things they think you'll like? What's the, uh, what are you acquiring I, mostly? It's a full combo, all of the above. Uh, you know, things are sent, there are artists I follow and watch their practice and, and begin to engage with their galleries. I do studio visits when safe. Um, and, you know, there are artists that, like any, you know, collector, uh, I, I have a list of artists that I'd love to add to the collection to help, you know, build out this narrative. So it's, it's important to me to find those artists, find their partners, find their galleries, and then begin the conversation and, and bring it to life. Um, well, that's that's amazing. I mean, this is the this, this is the dream. Like you're literally living my dream. Um, I think that one of the things that's really striking about your space as well is that this is not a gallery. This is your home. 
No, this is my, my home. Far from a gallery. Yeah. This is where you have guests. This is where you entertain. And I feel like for some people, you know, it could. it's hard to imagine, like, living in a museum like this. Here we have a uh, Cron Davis. I mean... Some of this stuff, it's like you, you, how do you, how did you decide that you were going to live in a space that was kind of so full um, of pieces and how has that kind of affected like your, kind of like how you live? Yeah, you know, I, I, um, wow, I think it's always, I'm always trying to pull back and it's very, very hard because there's just talent in the world right now and there's so many amazing stories that artists are telling. So I think for me, it's a matter of, it being in a place where I personally um, get to enjoy seeing it every day so that I can see it in conversation uh, with other works by other artists. And, th and this room is truly just indicative of, you know, artists at many different uh, places in the art world, at many different levels in the art world. Quran is someone who is uh, extremely talented. And, uh, you know, this is a, a work of hers, and I've, I've been a fan of her work for quite some time, but... You know, this was one of those acquisitions that I knew uh, that this was going to be a meaningful part of my collection, and it absolutely is. And then on the fireplace is a sculpture by, you know, Kahinde Wiley, um, who is, you know, quite famous for many things, but also painted the first black president's portrait. And then this amazingly, hauntingly beautiful painting by Jarrell Gibbs, uh, who is an artist who is emerging in this field and sits comfortably on the wall next to Kahinde. It's just... These conversations, again, of mixing um, some different types of work from artists in different parts of the art world, I think, is is something I just get really excited about. Yeah, it's incredibly eclectic, but it all really works, and that's the surprising part. You want to talk about this piece here? Yeah, so a couple of things here. The tapestry on the piano is by Theaster Gates, and it's a series of uh, his civil rights throw, his civil rights series, and this is a civil rights throw, which is really amazing. And it's made of poses uh, when you're up close to it. So I, more than anything else, have to remind people this is this is a this is a beautiful piece of art. It is not a mat uh, for your wine glass. So that is always a everything is a piece of art. I automatically say it up front. Just assume it's art because it definitely is. And then the large painting on the wall is by a Brazilian artist, No Martins, that I am, I am really excited about. And I think what's so amazing is no matter where you are in the world, these themes of race and color just are prominent in our stories that are being told. So having artists also from around the globe um, is, is something that's really very important to me and something very special. And in the corner are two works um, by, uh, uh, that's Alex Anderson. And on the other side are two works by Nautiline Pierre. So again, a series of artists who are emerging in a platform and creating greatness as they as they move along. Uh, something I just want to point out, although, I mean, first of all, I think it's so important that so many of these themes are universal. You know, we see this right now. You know, you can go to Nigeria, you can go to the UK, you can go to California, New Orleans. People are talking about the same shit. And I think that the artists are the kind of canaries in the coal mine that are telling us that these are things that connect all of us. Um, one thing I want to say, and there's a couple instances of this in your home, you're using spaces in your home that are not typically thought of as a place for work. Like, talk to me about, like, how you've been utilizing these ceilings. Yeah, it's because I have absolutely no filter. I don't know how to say no. And then I get the work and I have to figure it out, which is actually just crazy. So... This is a work by um, um, Felipe Baez, who's just, he's just extraordinary. And uh, we saw the work on a wall, and I'm like, ugh, there's no wall for this. And it's also just so delicate, and it was just freely pinned to the wall. And I wanted to do the same thing, but the only wall it fit in was the stairwell, which is just too trafficked. And even just the swipe of a bag could do some damage. Um, and believe it or not, this was one of the safest places to put it. And it's also... So someplace that I literally get to enjoy either to watch TV and every time I lie down, it's the first thing I see. And it's just incredible. Well, I mean, that's, yeah, I, I, you, when you have so many pieces, you got to get creative about where you put everything. Um, I'm going to now jump to the second floor. Like, it, all right. Um, cause I, amazing, amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like, where do you, where do you even begin? I want to get back to where we are now. So 
For those of you who don't know, this is a, a really cool technology called Matterport. Arthur led us into his home and my buddy Chad to kind of like spend an hour and a half kind of photographing all of this. And so here's the stairwell that you're talking about. Like way to just utilize every square inch you have. All of it, all of it, all of it to struggle. Uh, so a, a couple of really uh, phenomenal works uh, from some artists that have generated a tremendous amount of excitement in the art space. The Portrait of the Family is by uh, Wangari Matange, and uh, she is she is someone I think the entire world is watching right now and and is, has created a very covetable practice for herself. The piece that's suspended from the uh, ceiling is Troy Michi. Uh, it's an amazingly beautiful piece and literally goes down the, uh, the entire staircase. I, I actually took down a chandelier in order to hang this work because I, I wanted it to be in the collection so badly. And then the stunning uh, abstract painting is by Tom El Sayi, who is just genius material uh, and an artist that I, I'm just really excited to see what happens with him um, over time. And then the uh, former linen closet turned into art presentation uh, is by uh, Genevieve Gaynard. And uh, Genevieve uh, and I um, is typical of most relationships I have with artists. You know, we meet, we talk, we hang out, I get to see their show, I buy the work, I come up with creative ways of thinking of living with it. I fell in love with this clock and this figurine. I was obsessed with it. And I said, what would happen if I gave you a closet or a room to just build out in the same way? So I used her wallpaper installers. She came and installed the figurine in the closet. Um, I had to order a new door so that it could be glass. See, and two. Yeah, I had to have a carpenter install that door. I mean, it was like a whole thing. And, and it's it's the love of art that makes you do things like this. But now I have this magical moment that I get to see every single day um, when I walk outside my bedroom. And it's, it's pretty amazing and special. I mean, it's amazing kind of like when you are kind of committed to collecting and you really are so passionate about this. You kind of build a world that can accommodate it. You know, most people like don't want to modify their home in the extreme or build plants or things on the ceiling. You know, it's like really I think that people really need to understand that this is not just like an investment strategy or something that's decorative. This is really a worldview and kind of a system of values that you're living out every day. And I think your home is definitely the most intimate place to kind of make that statement happen. So we can kind of go into um, this room here, which I think is like another conversation about how do you kind of start meeting the Genevieves? And, you know, we have Diedrich Brackens here on the left. Like, I think at this point... Yeah, so this is, this is a perfect example. Yeah, I met Genevieve first, and then Genevieve introduced me to her roommate, who happened to be Dietrich. And, you know, just over time, it's it's developing, you know, real honest relationships as humans and 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 getting to know each other and falling in love with each other and um you know understanding where they want to go and and having them be part of my life and this piece from dietrich is so incredibly special because the animals depicted um in his quilt are actually my dogs that i lost and it's it's a it's a memorial to them that is done in a way that is literally uh one of the most special things in this house and I, I couldn't be more grateful. And this is this is a true example of artwork being born out of a relationship. It's it's something that is incredibly meaningful and personal to me. Absolutely, it's stunning. And I think that you know at this point you are also able to you know meet artists who are at a a very promising but still kind of an early stage in their careers. Like, what is it like to serve as a a mentor to some of your favorite artists, kind of as they. Because, you know, the art world, oh, is, it's, it's very broad. It's not easy to navigate, especially for yeah. black people all the time. And, and talk about that. You know, my experiences in the art world and, and being able to connect artists to other artists um, who are, you know, at different stages who may prove to be helpful with advice or counsel about things. And uh, it's, just, it's just a great place to be, to be in conversation um, with artists and know that you're part of their history. Uh, when you step into a situation like that. And it's it's something that I don't take very lightly. Time is a commodity that many of us don't have in, in abundance. And um, I don't take lightly the responsibility of, of sharing with someone 
um, wisdom or opinions or introducing them to people who can share better and smarter wisdom than I can give um, just to make sure that they're getting all the right answers. And, you know, most times it's, it may not be me. It's like you should talk to another artist. Um, sometimes it's you should talk to a curator. Um, because I, I remember that my 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 eye is collector's eye and my passion is collector. So no matter what happens, um, at some point I'm like, okay, so like where's the transaction? Because I want to own something. I want to get something. And and then when it moves past that point, I'm just in. And it, 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 the, the world just opens up. And then sometimes it's not about the acquisition. Sometimes it's just about being on the page with the artist and building the relationship. And then you acquire later. Like that happens too. And, or, you know, you don't acquire at all. And I still have a great relationship with the artist. So it, it's all very, uh, it's all very um, um, honest and it's all very, just, it comes very easily. And it's something that I, I don't take for granted. I really do, I really do value these relationships. Well, it starts from a genuine place of kind of love and support. It doesn't have to be transactional because there's sometimes the support you can give is actually more important than even the purchase, you know? So I think that, and also it must be, what's more satisfying than seeing an artist early in their career, helping them out, maybe even having gotten one of their initial pieces and then just seeing them skyrocket. Aside from the value, it's like just seeing someone kind of really come into themselves. Uh, there's no better feeling I can imagine. No, it's, it, it's extraordinary. I'm, I'm so excited for uh, this moment that we're living in because I, I feel like it's just the great beginning of something and, and uh, this journey is just going to, you know, become more amazing. There are announcements that come out every day about artists, you know, taking their practice to the next level. It just, it doesn't get better than that. And it's, it's extraordinary watching. Yeah. I mean, for, you know, for instance, Diedrich, it's just like extremely exciting to see what he's up to. Um, yeah. yeah like, I just want to pop, I just want to pop in here because it's like, Y'all, like, this is just the bathroom. I mean, I'm not going to get into this uh, fist in the bathroom. Um, but I think that, uh, well, we can, actually. Uh, this is, a, I believe, a Kara Walker here. I'm yeah, it's the, it's the Kara Walker, uh, Walker pop-up book, uh, which is rather... Uh, Naturally, just next to the toilet. It's just like... <laughs> That's amazing. I can't. I just... Oh, my gosh. Uh... It was really, really beautiful work. And uh, this uh, piece on the wall here is by Maya Stovall, uh, an artist who is pretty new to my collection, but um, I now have three amazing epic works from her. Just really excited to see what happens with her practice. And then on the opposite wall, this this bathroom is just so cool now with these two works. is a phenomenal work by, uh, by Gisela Colon. And I'm, I'm just really, really excited about, you know, both of these artists and, where they are at this moment in their careers is, is pretty extraordinary to be part of their journey so far. Yeah, I mean, the lucky guest who uses this bathroom, I just, you know, I just can't. Um, what, a wonderful, <laughs> what a wonderful experience you're giving people even in the most unassuming of places, Arthur. The generosity, I love, love to see it. Oh, yeah, well, you know, it's, it's sort of, like, you know, I, I get to enjoy it, I just peek in there and just watch. And so I think that like, what is, so now we're kind of in your room, um, yeah, so how do you kind of decide where something goes in your home? Given that you have so many, oh. and I'm sure that things switch out in, in all the time. Yeah, so you know, it's, it is a constant rotation. Like, uh, it, it is literally a constant rotation. I think I shared with you that at the start of this, that like, you know, even some of these images, things have changed just because things are just constantly rotating. I, I find myself at moments of finding a work and then for, you know, forgetting that it's coming and then the work shows up and I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to live with this. And then something else has to come down and then you have to paint and patch and all this stuff. So it's like this constant uh, um, turmoil, but it's beautiful turmoil that I'm really very excited about. So beautiful work by Jarrell Gibbs, amazing work by Kajal Bennis and amazing sculpture by uh, Shabalala Sal. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is an amazing place to wake up y'all, you know, in case you were wondering. Um, so yeah, and, I mean, uh, two, um, well, one just masterwork, um, by Carrie James Marshall to the left. I mean, I, I don't think it gets better than that. It just, it's Carrie James Marshall. And, uh, to the right is a uh, work by Ark Manor Niles. Um, uh, he's just a talented, talented, talented painter. And he's also one of my favorite human beings because he sends me pictures of food. <laughs> He's like, also, I have a literally a full text thread full of food. And I, I thought I was special. And then I talked to other collectors and they're like, 
uh, did you see Ark's like chicken the other night? I'm like, oh, yeah, I thought that was for me. <laughs> no. So, I mean, like, I love that he like goes through the effort of like texting individual people like food, um, but very talented artists. Um, Star on the Rise has got a great show getting ready to open up in New York. I can't wait for the world to see it. Great. Yeah, I love the when he was at UTA. Um, let's go into yet another another space. Now, I want to. So, one of the things I think is really interesting is when, you know, people collect work that is extremely challenging, you know, and I, and I especially I think that sometimes, especially given the times we're in, it's we've got to confront the kind of the sickness and the evil and the reality of some of the things that are happening. I like this work here. Um, I'm like, uh, what, is, this, what is it like to kind of see the word nigger, you know, several times a day? You know, you know I, I think that this world reminds me every day how far we've got to go. What is, what is happening in Atlanta right now um, and the experience that the Asian community has gone through for quite some time and everyone else is just waking up to it. It's sort of like, you know, okay, yes, this has been happening for quite some time. It's just, we've got a very long way to go. And so many artists um, do this, do the work in their practice. And I think it's important not to shy away from works that, uh, you know, this isn't boundary pushing to me. This is, this is reality uh, for me. It, it just is. So I wanted this place to live in a space that I saw it every morning because that is literally what it says in the work. And uh, it's just one of those things that just keeps it real for me and uh, everybody who sees it. Yeah, I mean, don't get realer. <laughs> I know that, you know, <laughs> on some brushes too. I mean, uh, and I really love this piece. Can you just tell Oh, Monica. Oh my gosh, she's such... She's still in school, and I think the art world has like gone nuts uh, about her pr practice. Um, she is just, she is just um, one of the brightest talents out there right now, and there is a a glow, um, a light that is coming on it's, that's shining on his right side, and it it literally feels like there's a spotlight somewhere in that painting that's glowing on the surface. And, and that is literally the level of detail and complexity in which she paints. It is, it is absolutely stunning. So this is a room where sort of, no, go ahead, Trey. No, I said, you feel like you know him. Like, you, I feel like I know. Yeah, yeah, I, I just did a picture of this to my friend Jerome. I was like, you, is this you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know <what> is? <laughs> He's got great attitude, but more than anything else, it's this, it's this youthful, uh, confidence of innocence and blackness and I uh, it is a very emotional personal work for me to see um, getting out of the shower every day it, it is a reminder that I just got to keep going for, for people who look like Jacob it's incredible absolutely um, so now I want to jump to your office if I can um, I really I actually hey well, let's get meta for a second you obviously know where Arthur is now um, but uh, here again, like, there's just, I mean, where do you even start? I, here's another piece I love. Um, oh, I mean, yeah. if, if, given that this is a place that you do a lot of work, I mean, kind of talk about this. Oh, my God, there's so much. Oh, my gosh. I, wow. Um, where do I begin? Uh, the amazing, incredible legend Lorna Simpson. Uh, the painting is called Night Dreams. It uh, is absolutely one of my favorite things. I... I love that it still leaves me speechless. She's so beautiful um, and it's so special. Um, and it is something that I am, I'm going to treasure for a lifetime. I mean, she's, she's just, a, she's an incredible artist. And then uh, the work to the right, um, if you're facing your computer is by Lauren Halsey. Um, this I saw at the Studio Museum of Harlem when she was a resident there and uh, had an opportunity to visit her in her grandmother's garage, believe it or not. And uh, this was available and I'm like, yes, I don't know where these columns are going, but I'll take, we'll take all of them. Um, so I knew I wanted to create a very special moment with these works uh, and we were definitely able to do that. And then on the other wall um, is an amazing work by, um, a... I, I love living with large scale works and it's, it's hard rotating things 
out, but this is a room I spend a lot of time in. So I see it as this very hopeful place to work and have an experience. And it, it just feels good. I mean, just staring at a rainbow all day. And then these columns with these carvings about, you know, the community of Crenshaw and, and Lauren's experiences growing up in LA and then Lorna Simpson's, you know, nitrate. I mean, it just sort of just is a great, it's a great space. Well, I mean, this is interesting. Well, to focusing on Lauren, you know, talk about someone whose career is just magnificent to behold. I also think that, you know, these artists that you, some of these artists that you have, it's like their kind of social practice even is as compelling as their art practice. I mean, Lauren's someone who's been spending, you know, so much time, like literally feeding and resourcing her community. Um, and it's, it's been wonderful to see not only that her work represents kind of her experience growing up in these places and kind of loving these people, but she's actually doing that in real life, you know, separate from a visual art practice. And I think that that's the kind of values that a lot of artists kind of bring to not their work, but everything they do. And that's, I think that's really amazing. Like, how has that been to see kind of how these are all very human? Lauren is, uh, Lauren is hard not to fall in love with. I think, I think within 30 minutes, um, I was completely gone and would have done anything in the world for her. And um, she has a very kind heart and a very kind soul and wants there to be more. She wants our community um, to thrive. She wants to see people do well. She wants to see us lifted up. And, you know, the fact that she has taken her practice to start a foundation that delivers fresh fruits and vegetables to people um, in our community um, for free, I, I, it says everything about her character and who she is. It just, it makes her work that much more meaningful. Um, and I feel really lucky um, that I get to live um, with her practice and live with her heart uh, to some degree. She had to, they were there, the, her project was down for a couple of years. So she had to reassemble these for me so that I could put them up. So, uh, you know, this, this is one of these works that, uh, you know, they, they will hopefully return back to the studio museum at some point, but I just feel like a very custodian. Um, I wanted to go into one of the front rooms quickly. I mean, like I said, we can't comment on everything or we'd be here literally for days. Actually, one of the, you didn't talk about this piece. And I think that what's really interesting too is, you know, we've, we've touched upon kind of these, these artists that, you know, you're discovering and that you're kind of helping to kind of get you told me the story about acquiring this piece. Yeah, she, you know, she's, she's an artist, um, you know, Sarah Gavlak, amazing gallerist uh, uh, here in LA and in Miami, um, sent a preview of Kim's work and I literally lost my mind, called, I called friends. I'm like, she's genius. These are, these are found tires and she's turn them into sculptures of, from about teachers and people that she's met from her community. Um, this work is called Charisse. And she's like, if you ever met Charisse, you'd think she was just amazing. And, you know, Kim is someone who I, I am really proud to say that lots of people in the art world are paying attention to her right now. She has, she has carved out a very special lane for herself. And um, I think her work is stunning and special. And I'm, I'm so honored uh, that this is one of the first things you see um, when you walk through the door, it, it sets a definitive tone um, that this is a place where you are going to see um, examples of black excellence all over the place. And I, I'm, it just makes me really proud. That's an extremely well, good way of describing this, this house. This is black excellence. Well, I mean, it's the house of black excellence. <laughs> you know, it truly is. <laughs> I mean, that's so, you know, you talked about in the office, this is the place you spend a lot of time. Obviously, a lot of us have been spending an inordinate amount of time at home this last year. How has your relationship yeah. to this collection and your house changed, if at all, like this last year? I mean, because oh, I know what kind of life you must have had before this, you know? Yeah, there's like, I, yeah, with the exception of, uh, I think, seven works, everything switched out. So I, I really did. I mean, it was just one of those things you just, you stare at it long enough and you're like, huh, that could be something else for a while. Um, so it was one of those things where it just happened rather naturally. And before I knew it, there were whole rooms that were just flipped up. Like, I don't even know what happened. Um, but it's, it's great. It's great. And I, and I think uh, it's, it's, I had the fortune of being able to um, support so many artists and galleries. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. And what a way to be able to kind of like bring yourself peace in this time where there's, 
you know, it's in short supply. I mean, even just this, like being able to look at these works every day, you know, especially this last year, all the all the bullshit we were dealing with as black people and just people in this country in general. I mean, way to have a home, you know, that feels like home and that feels so nourishing in some ways. Yeah, I, I think that that over um, time, uh, all of these narratives it's just come together in a very powerful way. So I, you know, this is a perfect example of, you know, the legendary Carrie James Marshall in a special edition project he did um, for the Renaissance Society, Genevieve, Jenny C. Jones, Sam Levi Jones, and, and, and Kahinde Wiley, all be beautifully weaving together. And just, you know, just, it's, it it's just makes a statement, even in something as, you know, um, super fancy as like, you know, this, St. Louis, China, uh, the thing that you still get from this is like, it's just still unapologetically black and it makes me, it makes me very happy. Well, we all need to be as unapologetically black as we can possibly <laughs> be at this, at this stage. Um, oops, so like, let's just talk about this one last piece here, which I love. This is in the dining room. Um, kind of. uh, this is by Asian artist uh, Didier Williams. And, uh, you know, Didier is incredibly talented. This is a very large work, so your, your computer makes it look very small. But this is another, this is sort of typical of what happens with me, is I buy an amazing work and I don't want to take anything else down. And I'm like, Windows, Windows, who needs Windows? Let's find a way to, like, suspend it somewhere. And, like, um, you know, the team at Art Movement and Brian and his team uh, are, like, family to me. They find and help me with creative ways of, um, displaying the work so that I can enjoy it and it doesn't have to sit in storage and, and just, it's, there's still light in the room. But what I also love is the presence of this work and what it does is, is rather extraordinary. It's just, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a happy, proud place to live. Absolutely. Well, Arthur, I mean, we've covered so much. I, I guess there's a, I have one more kind of question for you. Like one of my reactions to this is like, where do you go from here? I mean, what, You've already, it's like you could just never do anything else again, and I think that no one would be mad, you know? Maybe some. Yeah, no. Oh my gosh, there's so many stories. We have, there is so much ground to cover. There's, there's so much that has to be um, discovered and told. And, uh, you know, I, I heard someone say, well, oh my God, there's an oversaturation of uh, figurative work right now. And I'm like, are you kidding me? We haven't, there's not enough, like, keep going. Like, we'll just find new stories, find new voices, find new artists, support artists. Um, you know, there, there are new storytellers out there. You know, my, my, my hope and wish is that this continues to evolve and um, that, you know, a lot of these artists find the success that they hope for and they wish for, and that many collectors and institutions uh, and people begin to see themselves uh, and others in a very different light with with pride and with humanity um, and that you know we own telling this story and it's 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 a it's a gift to be able to live like this absolutely well Arthur you're truly an inspiration one of my favorite people uh, I I mean this is this is goals <laughs> like this is this is literal <laughs> goals I'm like okay so this is possible you know, you, you take enough time and consideration. And obviously, like, you're successful in many parts, of, in every part of your life. And that kind of feeds into being able to, to create this and support so many people. I just thank you so much. I love you. Um, everyone uh, check uh, out the, the UTA uh, Artist Space, which, you know, Arthur runs. And it is a, another wonderful place to kind of showcase this type of talent. Um, this is possible, people. Like, when you commit yourself to supporting artists and kind of, like, supporting people's visions for how the world could be not how how it is as well but how it could be this is what you can create and you can still live you can still sit on a sofa don't that use it really as a coaster but you know like it's a real home you know I, I, i've seen it myself so i know it's real oh, um, amazing. this amazing. has been so great well thank you arthur um i i can't wait to do this in a few years and see a completely different home somehow you know oh, i'm prepared to paint again <laughs>